you can't really, you know, you've got to learn to accept your body as it is. You can't throw in the towel, like that's not how you achieve your goals. It can be a really hard process sometimes when you feel like you're doing all the right things and it's not working. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. Today I'm doing a fat loss slash diet Q&A. So I put on my Instagram a question box asking, did I just say that right? <laughs> oh my god, my head. I put up a question box asking what questions you guys have and want me to cover in this YouTube. So that's what today is about. I love how from here up I'm like full glam. I had a photo shoot today and I wanted to make the most of having like my makeup done but if you look down i've got my like blanket because it's really cold and my dressing gown which i was like should i wear it probably should put a jumper on but the top's really cute so i wanted to wear it i don't feel like i feel pressure to look a certain way in my youtube like to be all glammed up like you guys have seen me bare skin and i'm actually so self-conscious at the moment of my skin because it's really breaking out bad at the moment yeah i'm kind of i don't know why i care because it's me and what you see is what you get. But you know, just thought it would look cute anyway. So it's been a mini since I've done a diet update. I've got my numbers, which I can go through at the end. I want to make these questions like quick fire questions, but some of them do require more detail and more extensive like explanations. So I'm going to try and keep it quick and short and sharp and not bore you. But you guys ask these questions, you want the answers. I'm not just going to give you like a shit answer like yes, no. I actually want to teach you stuff and like why we do the things that we do. You know, let's just jump into these questions now, shall we? First question. Do you go straight to a reverse diet after this diet? So I, um, in my head, I'm like, I'm going to answer these questions really simple. In my head, it's just gone like all this complicated stuff because I'm kind of reverse dieting now, but not your traditional reverse diet where I'm, I've finished the diet and I'm reversing back to maintenance calories as quickly as I can. Because my metabolism has downregulated so much, my calories are quite low for what I normally diet on. I'm just trying to like increase my calories but still be in a deficit and still lose weight. So I will jump straight back to my maintenance calories. Keep in mind guys though, your metabolism down regulates throughout extended periods of dieting. So your maintenance calories that you once started on are gonna be a little bit lower. And I've spoken about this in previous videos, given an equation and I know people have tried it and they're like, Ugh, that doesn't make sense, but it doesn't always, it's not like 100% a rule that you have to go by. So I will go straight back to maintenance calories, which will be lower, and then I'll reverse diet from then. Say you finish the diet, why would you go one week at 1300, one week at 1400, one week at 1450? This is still a diet. So go straight back to maintenance where you don't even gain weight and stay there and try and get your weight to stabilize and then start reverse dieting and trying to rebuild your metabolism back up. Do you need to do a refeed if you are losing weight? Refeeds are more psychological break than to help your metabolism or physiological effects. Have a look at my diet break video where I've explained that. But if you feel like you're really sick of dieting and you're feeling really restricted and you feel like you might break soon, then have a refeed. Use them as tools in your tool belt to make the diet easier to stick to longer term if that's what your goal is. What do you do when you're supposed to train but feeling really fatigued? Okay, so you've got to like toss a coin here. Are you tired just because you've maybe had like a bit of a shit sleep and you're just kind of feeling a bit lazy just do the workout like i'll put music on i will put my active wear on and i feel like that's half the battle you actually get energized from doing the workout and then if you're actually like burnt out and really need the rest just take a rest like maybe go for a low intensity walk with or take the day as like a full rest day. Make sure you're getting plenty of sleep in to fix that. Do you do anything specific to reduce the appearance of cellulite? No, I don't like dry brush or have specific creams or gels or moisturizers that I use or anything. I find for me, the leaner I am, the less body fat I have, the less cellulite, but I still have cellulite. I know you're not gonna wanna hear it, 
but it's just part of it. Like you can't really, you know, you've got to learn to accept your body as it is and everyone has cellulite. Sticking with it through distractions like parents always buying you junk. Yeah, that's really hard because one of my tips for sticking to your diet is not having that kind of food in the house because it's one thing not to eat it because it's not there and that's easier. It's a whole other thing to resist it when it's in front of you. So I would just have the conversation with them and say like, yo, mom and dad, stop buying me junk. Freaking love it. But this is my goal. I need your help. Are you on board? Support me and then take care of that. Um, there's a lot of questions about how do you not binge um, when you're having like meltdowns and period weight and when it's all not working and what to do after a binge and breaking your diet. There's so many questions about binging and stuff. Binging is like a clinical disorder. So it's actually something that you should be seeing a psychologist about if you are actually binging like intense over consumption of a lot of calories like fully exceeding and eating even beyond being full like that is binge eating whereas you can over consume your calories by having like four squares of chocolate so that I wouldn't consider that binge eating. If you are like binge eating at a clinical level, then I would suggest seeing a psychologist and talking to someone about it. I think it is very common. But if you're just, you know, overeating your calories, like it, it can be hard. Like there have definitely been days where I've gone over my calories and it's really important not to beat yourself up about it. It's important to use that push yourself to move forward. I will try and fast for as long as I can in the day. So I'll have coffee in the morning, which haters will say it's not fasting, which you know, technically it's not, but I'll just push out my first meal until as long as I can go like, and that's how I'll do it just because that makes me feel a bit better about the fact that I ate over, but it can also get you in a bad pattern of overeating and being like, oh, it's okay. I'll just cut calories tomorrow. Like you don't want to get into that headspace. You just don't want to be someone that is overeating your calories. So that's what I personally do for people that do it and don't don't want to drop their calories I said just get get back to it just that's it you just keep going you can't quit you can't throw in the towel like that's not how you achieve your goals if you only train three to four times a week are the others rest days or do you just focus on cardio so every single day I go for a walk I get my 10,000 steps in when I'm resting like my rest days I'm actually resting like I might be filming exercises for Instagram for instance I might go for a run I would say that's not a rest day like that's that's being active that's exerting myself but I don't consider that part of my weight training so that's additional if I'm feeling able to do so if I have the energy to do so if any extra activities I do detract from my weight training like if I'm not recovering properly if I'm not meeting the same reps and sets then I will drop back the runs and focus more on my weight training and my rest. But yeah, full rest days, I still, I get my steps every single day. That's not considered like training for me. Are you hungry all the time with this weather? If so, how do you overcome it? So this weather in Australia right now, it's coming into winter, so it's cold. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm finding myself, I'm not more hungry, like, it's more so a distraction or boredom. So I try to figure out like what I'm trying to distract myself from. It's often like a comfort thing and something that you reach to for a distraction. So figuring out why, but I mean, this doesn't hit the spot like, you know, food does, but warm tea and just trying to fill up on fluids and stuff and reminding yourself that this is not forever. Like if you are dieting and you're really struggling, you, you can stop dieting. It doesn't make you a failure. Like I just really want to get leaner. I really want this. Like I'm hungry for this physique change. I'm hungry to push through my current body situation and, and get it back down to where I sit comfortably. I just, I want to get there. I take photos of myself for a living every day. So it can be really hard seeing myself and being like, that's not a body I'm used to being in. So yeah, I just I just really want this diet to, to do that. How do you know if you're holding water and how do you get rid of it? It's kind of hard to say. Again, like I just said, I take so many photos of myself. I know my body really well and I can tell when I'm watery. It's like the muscles that I do have look tight and defined and you can see them more when I'm drier. So when I'm less watery and less inflamed. When I'm watery, I get like a bit puffy in my face. You can't see as much definition in my body. Obviously fat hides that too but I know like I'll wake up one day and be harder and leaner and more defined and then another day I'll wake up and, and not be the same and I'm like I know I haven't just gained weight overnight so I know that that's water and inflammation how to get rid of it I've done heaps of videos on this it's got to do mostly with your cycle and stress so sleep plays like a huge role in this 
And just on that, the body fluctuates so much. Like you're not always just not going to be watery. Like some days you're just going to be watery. Some weeks you're just going to be watery. Like it's just how the body is. So you just kind of have to accept it. How to go about eating out for dinner when trying to stick to a deficit. So I filmed what I ate for breakfast for you guys, which you can see I literally ordered egg whites and chicken. <laughs> All right, so I'm just here with the gal. Wow, Yay! First date. I know. Isolation. Isolation dates. As you can see, there's like social distancing and like no one else is here. So we're following the rules. Anyway, um, what I have ordered is super basic bitch. Six egg whites. <laughs> and some chicken breast. I know, so good. Um, and on the menu, I was just looking at this. So I basically just got that. Um, and I swapped the salmon for chicken. So I just literally got sides. But the best like tips for eating out is looking at the menu ahead of time. If possible, if you have any input in where you're eating, try and request somewhere that has options that suit you and your diet. It's really challenging because when you're out, you're like, you know, I'm out, I want to celebrate, it's about food. And like I'm in company with people, but that's just the thing. It's like try and change the focus from being about the food to being on the company, which right now in isolation is like actually so nice to be around people. People. It's like less about the food and more about the company. But yeah, look at the menu ahead of time. See if there's meals that you can get, like some chicken breast and some vegetables and like put the dressing on the side, like all those little things that you guys know and try and track it to the best of your ability and don't forget to add oils and stuff because obviously they cook with a lot of olive oil and, and that adds up really quickly in your calories. Do you increase your calorie intake on the days you're exercising when you're dieting? No. That is one approach to cycle calories, but right now I'm just doing flat 1300 every single day but if it works for you that's totally fine could you please explain what the calorie cycling thing you're doing is and are you still doing it so i'm not doing like a weekly calorie cycle like that where you have like high days and low days i'm literally doing like 12 days dieting and then two days back at maintenance calories and this is part of that semi reverse diet i was telling you about where i'm trying not to let my bmr down regulate any further than it already has i'm trying to like upregulate it if possible from a deficit so i'm increasing my calories like every cycle so if i drop weight if i drop weight on the scale i'll add another 100 calories to my deficit calories and if i drop in my refeed i'll add another 200 calories and no it's a little bit complex but it's just it's not like a rule to do it but it's just something that i'm testing right now so whether it's gonna work we'll see have you overcome the plateau how are you feeling how much longer do you want to cut for i overcame that that plateau when i took the diet break honestly i don't know if it was really a plateau i think i was just not in a deficit and then coming back to sydney i really got into a good routine with my sleep and a good routine with my calories and the scale yeah it did start to come down and then i had my refeed and because i baked those freaking amazing cookies and i really struggled with that i like i did eat one of the cookies <laughs> anything that's like refined sugar and was high calories really throws the scale off so like the scale jumped up so much after that since then the scale has been coming down 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 and then uh, on saturday i really messed up with the miscalculation and ate more than i thought i was and like blew my calories out i went i think i ate like 1800 calories like it was a total accident i'm like damn if i was gonna eat that many calories i would have like used it on something else so it's just it's been a roller coaster really i'm feeling good like yeah i i did post on my instagram stories that i had like a bit of a meltdown just because i'm like why is this the hardest process i've ever had to go through dieting before and i think it's just like my bear is just so low right now it just is and i just have to go for longer and I just have more fat to lose than I've ever had before. So it just takes time. Like think about how long it takes to put the weight on. It's gonna take longer to get it off. It's It can be a really hard process sometimes when you feel like you're doing all the right things and it's not working. But every time I think that within a few days, I'll, you know, there'll be some kind of change, whether it's like I see it in my physique or on the scale, the scale's just not budging much. I know it's being freaking annoying. And how long am I gonna go for? I'm not gonna put a deadline on it. I'm gonna go until I'm satisfied, basically. So people comment and they're like, feels like this has been going forever. I'm like, oh, you think it's been going forever for you? Try being the person doing it. Like I said, I really freaking want this. I wanna make this work. I need to push through it. 
I don't, there's no other way to go about doing this. This is the only way to achieve fat loss is by eating in a deficit. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to prove that this works. Like I'm determined. How do you never seem to overeat, fuck up, binge? Please another answer other than focus on my goals. When I really am craving something and like want something. It isn't, oh, think about my goals. But it's more just like I have a conversation with myself where I'm like, okay, how are you going to feel afterwards if you eat this? Like, will you feel disappointed in yourself? Like, will you go to bed and feel disappointed with yourself tonight if you do that? And the answer is always yes. So I'm like, okay, so don't do it. Like you've got to catch yourself before you do it. Cause so much of the overeating happens mindlessly and you don't think about it. You don't think about the consequences. You just act. If you're able to catch yourself before it unravels and you actually act on the thought that really helps. Now this doesn't work every single time, but it can work. And you like do teeth, you go to bed. Cause often for me, the cravings happen at night when I'm like not focused on working or anything else like i'm bored and i just want to eat but yeah when i am hungry i find that hard i do tend to snack on like cherry tomatoes because they're locale but yeah it's it's the hunger can be hard yeah the, they're just trying to break the thought and put something between you and the actual act of doing it that is like my best piece of advice heaps of questions on reverse dieting but i'm going to get into that when i actually start reverse dieting yeah and how do you motivate yourself to stick to your diet even if the scale isn't is barely dropping is barely dropping well at least it's dropping you know it's working like i kind of said before guys i just it is hard and like honestly there are days where if it doesn't i'm like I get into that fuck it head space. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to like eat more because this isn't working. But I know that I can't be angry at the diet not working if I don't stick to it. You can't do that. It's just going to skew your data. So it just it, that pushes me. Are you happy with your progress? Ugh. Like I'm frustrated. I'm really frustrated that it's taking this long and needing me to be on these low calories. I'm really frustrated. I'm not going to lie. I can't be annoyed or angry at my progress because it is what it is. And I, I don't control it. I control my deficit. I control what I eat and I control my training. I can't control the fact that I can't train in a gym. I can't control the fact that my calories have to be this low to be a deficit for me. So it's just the way it is. And it's just going to take longer than I've ever experienced and longer than I expected. And that's just just like a bit of pill to swallow but it's the way it is so how do you deal with the reaction of other people if you are dieting i'm always judged yeah no that is hard like people just always have an opinion about it probably because they're reflecting their own insecurities onto you like whether it's dieting whether it's striving for a business goal you know whether it's having a really big dream for what you want to achieve with your life there's always going to be people that have something to say about it or have something negative to say and I don't know are they the people you want to be surrounded by like I don't want to be surrounded by unsupportive people that don't support my goals like what benefit is that to me so you know they might not out with like flat out say anything they just give you the vibes you just have to rise above it and be like I'm doing this for me and it doesn't matter what they think but if people say shit then I would be like why does this like why do you have an issue with it why does it make you uncomfortable and then they you know it puts it back on them they have to think about actually why does it make me uncomfortable and then you know they'll come up with some interesting answers that's for sure i've got heaps of people saying that they're loving the diet series and i really appreciate that guys like this is what i do for a living but sometimes it's hard and like i just posted something on instagram about a full day of eating on 1300 calories and got like you know a few people like roasted me in the comments and it's like uh i'm just trying to share what i'm doing to help people but you know what the good outweighs the bad how tall am i 160 centimeters what brand of foods you use or tips like oats etc yeah okay so steel cut oats are going to keep you feeling the fullest versus quick oats so i'm happy medium i go in the middle i like rolled oats um there's a lot of like diet hacks like sugar-free maple syrup natvia do these like low calorie salted caramel and chocolate sauces that are like very low calorie i really like if i'm having a little bit of dairy in my food yo pro vanilla yogurt because it's lower calorie and higher protein frozen beans frozen cauliflower broccoli rice charisma potatoes are really good because they're low carb but that's kind of it for brands like i yeah just eat mostly whole foods is it possible to have body comp changes without the scale dropping 100 percent for newer trainers more so because you can build muscle and lose fat at the same time how many days and hours do you work out a week three to four weight training sessions around 45 minutes to an hour 
I've been doing runs lately for like mental headspace clarity um, and I'm doing that like one to two times a week and I include that in my daily step goal. How often should I be dropping weight if I'm in a deficit? Daily, weekly? Love your content. Thank you. There's no like rule. I would say you want to be dropping a minimum of like 250 grams per week but as you've seen in this diet series I have not been doing that. Like the first few weeks I dropped heaps and then I hit a plateau and then I kept dropping and it might be anything from like 100 grams that I'm dropping to like barely anything when I have refeed day excuse the data because the scale goes up afterwards so to say I haven't dropped at all like it is quite difficult so that's why it's important not to just judge your progress on the scale how not to get consumed with the diet mentally when you diet guys you, you kind of do get consumed by it. it it's cool that you're aware it's cool that you're asking that question because you just need to be aware of it and be like okay cool um yeah dieting is happening like it's happening in the background it's just my food it's my food is planned I've got that on lock but my life is about so much more than just my diet don't hold yourself back from doing too many things because of your diet like still live your life can you rely on your Fitbit Versa to know how many calories to eat on each given day no nah, I don't use my Fitbit for calories or anything like so I don't actually know what equation they use to figure that out yeah I, I wouldn't go off a watch someone also asked about periods and said how do you know like where you are at in your period I use the Fitbit app that comes with my watch and I also track in my spreadsheet like a highlight in red the days that I've got my period so I know like scale fluctuations why so it looks something like this so the red is when I have my period the blue is my fertile window I wanted to do like a physique update for you as well so here's that <laughs> let me just pull out my spreadsheet and give you the 411 so I had 2,000 calories on the first refeed day which was meant to be 1700 and then I had 18.24 the next day. The week before that, I was 65.39 kilos on average. So I was weighing, yeah, around like 65.2, 65. I got down to 64.8. And then the next day I was up at 65.1 and then 65, 65, 65.1, 65, 65. And then I had my refeed and I went up 65.4 and then went up to 66.2 because it coincided with my period. And I just like, that is such a high increase. It's like 1.2 kilos or something. So it jumped up quite a bit. So that week I would have lost more if I didn't have the refeed in my period, but I dropped 130 grams from the last week. And then the week following that, because I'd had the cookie and the refined sugar and the flour and the gluten and everything, I went up to 66.7 and I had my period. So, and then it started coming down because I was back in my deficit calories. So it went 66.7, 66.6, 65.5, like goodbye one kilo overnight. That was the last day of my period. 65.2, 65, 65. And then that was the day I messed up my calculations somehow with my tracking and I went up to 65.4, which brings us to today, which is 65.3. So it's my weight is all over the shop. But what I have noticed when I was on those 65s, I was feeling really lean. Like my calories were 1300 the whole time. I was feeling really lean in my body. So I wasn't too upset by the scale because I felt the changes in my body. I feel okay about the scale, yeah, when I see the changes. That's the update for now, guys. I hope these questions were really helpful. Um, keep them coming. Like I'll go through the comments and answer any common questions. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I'll give you guys an update. I'm not going to do a physique update this time. I'll do it in another one coming soon. But make sure you subscribe and like the video, comment anything you want to know. Turn post notifications on so you don't miss any of these diet series videos. And I will be back soon with another video. Mwah. Ciao, ciao.